Hi, it's The Wire. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Always 1776.com, a free site. For true crime fans, TheWireCrime.blog, a free site. Let's talk about the Diddy situation. Today is September the 21st, 2024. It's early in terms of Diddy's incarceration, right? But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me just say, I'm going to throw a challenge flag here. I'm not trying to defend Diddy in any way, shape, or form. But what I am going to do is just talk about how society has changed and how we're ignoring obvious cultures that exist in places like New York City and Southern California. Right? Let's just throw out a few names here and let's talk about how different things were. In the 1980s, I read a book. I believe the name of it was Out of Bounds by one of the very best NFL players who ever lived. Running back Jim Brown, right? Jim Brown is one of the holy grail guys in NFL history. Average 5.2 yards a carry. The year he retired, he was MVP with Johnny Unitas. Led the league in rushing several times, I believe all but one year. He was very much a public figure. In fact, he even announced some football games for a network. So just understand, in the 80s, Jim Brown wrote Out of Bounds. And in Out of Bounds, he talked about how he liked women who were 21, 22 years old. How he would hold parties where that age group would flock to the parties, right? He even talked about how there was a Muslim athlete who, you know, didn't believe in premarital sex or what have you, but one day knocked on his door while he was having one of his parties with women who were 21, 22 years old. And of course, as Jim Brown put it, this athlete wasn't there for hoops, right? Brown let him into the party. Now understand the fallout that came from out of bounds. Folks, it didn't exist, right? In the 1980s, life was different. No one blinked an eye. The assumption was that when you were famous, women flocked to you and that that was the reason why people were trying to get famous in Los Angeles. Jim even talked about hanging out down at the Sunset Strip and how one night the women weren't coming on to him. And Jim, of course, was retired by this point, right? Jim's a guy in his 40s at this point. He was talking about how there was another musician in the club that the women were all flocking to the very women that he was hoping to get to his place for another party sometime. And that young musician was Prince. And Jim was just talking about how he lost that too, as he called it, a musical genius that night. Right now, I'm, I'm just telling you how life was. So when I moved to Los Angeles, I actually lived by the Strip. And I would go into these clubs and they would have some of the best bands I had ever heard. Now it was a little bit discouraging because I just arrived in LA and I'm listening to bands that were better than the bands I was hearing on the radio and they were unknowns just playing in random clubs at you know on the Sunset Strip and of course the women were all over the place, including the girlfriends of the band members, right? All of these women just look gorgeous. 
and you understood wow if you're a celebrity you get all these women right they come to your setups you know talent was a magnet for a lot of young gorgeous women and understand the way LA is you're on Sunset Strip it's not like all of these women live on the strip they don't many live in the valley over the hill right many live in places like Downey Lakewood right many of these women are you know transplants they've come to LA they want to be a successful actress they want to be a successful singer right so they they are coming to LA uh, they're flocking to their favorite scenes uh, the people with some kind of prestige right future NFL Hall of Famer Jim Brown or Prince or whoever right they're gonna flock to these spots a writer once wanted to do an interview in the 1960s with the Doors lead singer Jim Morrison so he was on the strip looking for Morrison right and just understand he found Morrison lying in the street drunk right so of course he wakes up Morrison and does the interview right folks a lot's happening in Los Angeles if you know the party spots you know the party spots right I'm just telling you a lot of people go looking for the party spots folks are looking for a party it was understood that you wanted to be an athletic star a musical star you know so you can actually attract all of these women let me point out too I uh, was a summer associate for a Beverly Hills law firm in the later part of the 1980s um, and I got handed files and I'm looking through the file and I see some clean-cut celebrity and of course the file would involve the mistresses that this clean-cut married celebrity had on the side and the issues arising from that relationship right it could be a pregnancy it could be the celebrity wanting to pay the rent for his girlfriend who you know was a waitress but now is a kept woman I saw some other photos celebrities who uh, earlier in their careers uh, had posed for nude photos not unlike Marilyn Monroe right folks in the 80s we understood that all of this was going on right we understood too that there was literally a culture of this right there shows on TV right now where you know I believe the show bookie on one of these streaming services one of the guys has a mistress he's put her up in Reseda he was paying her rent folks let's just say when I saw that fictional storyline I started laughing because I had actually encountered that story set in real life and looking at what was happening with other people right so let me just say we get to Harvey Weinstein no, I'm not here to defend Harvey in the slightest right I think Harvey is atrocious but what I want to say is Harvey Weinstein like Jim Brown was not operating in a vacuum right folks I'm just telling you there are I'm sure today a lot of aspiring actresses who are hoping for a big break who if some exec like Harvey Weinstein you know wants to flirt with them and they feel that flirting with Harvey is gonna help them get some break in their career some role in a movie let's stop kidding ourselves even with Harvey in prison you understand that that's going on right now in Los Angeles 
Right, folks? You go along Hollywood Boulevard in L.A., right, where they have all these stars in the pavement and stuff like that, and you're going to see a lot of runaways. You're going to see a lot of people who move to L.A. who are, if they have a car, sleeping in their cars, Right, you're gonna see magazines. Back in my day, it was the LA Weekly, where you would open the LA Weekly and you would see people looking for friends, looking for sugar daddies. Right, you understood that, you know, there was a financial component to the relationship that was being offered. Right? We don't even have to go back to the 1980s. Many of us remember when Craigslist was like this. Ten years ago. Right? So, understand, Harvey Weinstein, I'm not saying he wasn't offering a quid pro quo. Do this for me, I'll give you a minor role in this movie. I'm not saying some of the women did not want to be involved romantically with Harvey Weinstein, nor am I even suggesting remotely that sex should be part of any job requirement. Right? I'm not saying any of that. But what I'm saying is that Harvey wasn't the lone bad actor. Folks, Los Angeles is flooded with casting couches, with people claiming to be filmmakers who really have other motives with you know not only guys looking for mistresses but mistresses looking for married men right understand if you're with a married man the expectations are limited you still have some anonymity. You can still live your regular life. You don't have to introduce him to your friends. Right? So, let me just say, we get to Jeff Epstein, and now Diddy. Right? And we're kidding ourselves, aren't we? Are we supposed to believe, and I'm not going to say any names, because I don't want to get sued. But we're supposed to believe that none of these celebrities at these events knew that any of these women were under 18 years of age. Let me just say too, just like with Jim Brown in the 80s, and again, with Jim Brown, I don't think there was any blowback. He released this book, people shrugged, they understood. That was Los Angeles in the 1980s. Right? You know, so let me just say, you know, with regard to Jeffrey Epstein, no one should have been surprised that some of the women at these parties came from broken homes. That some of these women working for Jeffrey Epstein were hit on by men who were decades older than them. Right? Let's go one step further. We shouldn't be surprised that Jeffrey Epstein is not the only person in Manhattan who, of course, had celebrities use his spot to meet younger women to set up relationships that were ongoing, that might be contrary to their public images, right? In public, someone might be a member of the royal family, might have a wife or a fiancé, we'll call them a public beard. But in private, wants to be with that 18-year-old who understands him. And of course, that 18-year-old is there because Manhattan's an expensive place to live. Cultivating these benefactors actually helps pay a lot of bills. Not only that, you're, let's say, from the other side of the tracks. You left home at a young age. 
here's an opportunity to be around affluence, to actually visit some affluent places with an older sugar daddy, to actually have an adventure that you weren't able to have growing up as a high school kid somewhere in the Midwest. Right, so let's talk about the Diddy situation. I'm not gonna get into specifics, but what I want people to figure out here is that this is the music industry. Diddy's not some rogue bad actor, some lone wolf in the music industry, right? No, Diddy is part of the cultural landscape. There's a quid pro quo. Diddy's not the only one trying to set up the quid pro quo relationship. Understand, some of the people around Diddy are there because of the affluence, because of the celebrities, at Diddy parties. Because of the ability to go to five-star hotels, to go to great restaurants and not have to stand in line. Right, the problem I'm having with the press coverage, and I'm not here to justify anything Diddy did, but the problem I'm having with the press coverage is this myth, this idea that a Jeff Epstein and a Diddy are unique. You and I know they're not unique. You and I understand in the music business especially, right, there are a lot of people trying to curry favor with young talent. There are a lot of people who want to get dirt on celebrities, on singers, on young people so they can pressure them to appear on songs, to sign contracts with them, to be a money source for them. Right, let me say too, I know there is a puritanical sensibility out there where people hear about group sex scenes and then they say, oh my goodness, did Diddy force this young woman, that young woman, uh, these people, did Diddy force them to do things that they didn't want to do? Now let's be adults here, loaded line. Right, folks? Sometimes it might, <laughs> the way I see it, the 22-year-olds who wanted to party with Jim Brown who actually went to Jim Brown's house to party with him, knew they weren't going there to watch TV. Right, with Diddy, the rumors have been around for years. I believe those rumors attract people just like the Playboy Mansion attracts people. Right, I knew a girl who wanted to go to the Playboy Mansion Right, folks, there are people like that out there. Right, let's not blame Diddy for every group scene that took place at his place. I'll blame him for taping everything. Right, I'll blame him for the video I saw where he's slapping his girlfriend around. Right, that's unacceptable. But all I can say is the fact that group sex may have taken place at a Diddy mansion doesn't tell me much because there's a group sex community out there. Right? People understand. People, in fact, are traveling to Los Angeles for access to decadent affluence. Right? They understand that that's the scene that's happening at Diddy's. Right? Let me also point out, too, the drug use at Diddy parties. Right, we're going to have to figure out whether Diddy is just another celebrity in Los Angeles who is using drugs and um, had some way to obtain drugs, or whether Diddy is actually a drug dealer 
dealing drugs. Right, folks? You know, again, let's not be hypocritical and puritanical. Right? If you go to Los Angeles and you're at a movie industry party with a lot of young people, are you going to be surprised if someone in the room is using coke? Is on X? Right, folks? I don't, I don't think there should be that much surprise. Right? So, I think Diddy's in a world of trouble. But let's make sure he's not Lee Harvey Oswald here. Right? Let's not have the fiction that a Diddy or a Harvey Weinstein or a Jeffrey Epstein are the only people doing the things that they do. Right? Please. You know, let's also not treat everyone around them as if they're a hostage. Right? You and I know many influential people. Red Weinstein's place in Manhattan. Many influential people were on Weinstein's planes going to his islands. Many influential people were at Weinstein's islands. Let's not pretend that all of them were hostages. Especially since many of them were repeat visitors. Let's also give Diddy the benefit of the doubt. Right? We're hearing about lace drinks at his parties and stuff like that. How many Diddy parties would one have to show up to in order to figure out that some of the drinks were laced? Right? Now, you can imagine at a public trial where we're all trying to present the image of being clean cut, you know, leave it to beaverish, two parent families loyal to our spouses you can imagine all the horror that will come if there's a diddy trial on tv and then they start talking about things like ecstasy and drinks group sex young people right the last i checked you're old enough to vote in the united states at 18 years old right so this diddy story is salacious I believe, like Epstein, he's going to be in prison for a long time, at least sentenced for a long time. But I want people to understand that Diddy is just the latest part of a culture, right? I need for people to consider the idea that many of the people at Diddy events were there voluntarily were willing participants at these events, right? I'm hearing jokes about all this lube and stuff like that. Folks, if you went to the Playboy Mansion, wouldn't you expect there to be a lot of lube there? If you went to Plato's Retreat in New York City in the 1970s, wouldn't you expect there to be a lot of lube there? What does the lube suggest? That the host is imprisoning people? Or does the lube just suggest that that's the culture, that's the scene? Many of the people there, most of them, are consenting adults. Right? So, I always have mixed feelings when I see how the times have changed. I'm not saying the 80s were perfect. I'm not saying that at all. We're still sorting through things. I understand the Michael Jackson estate recently got sued. That's a different situation involving minors, right? I understand in the Diddy situation, some of the people are alleged to have been minors. Okay, we understand, right? But let me just say, if you hung around LA in the 1980s, and you're hearing about group scenes, uh, parties that are out of control, parties with cocaine involved. Uh, I guess these days it would involve uh, meth, maybe other things. Um, folks, many folks are not going to be surprised. Right? To single out one bad actor 
when there are bad actors, when there are bad actors all over the city of Los Angeles or New York City, right? I think is a mistake, right? Let me also say too, the times determine a lot, right? So Diddy's not sued. Then New York opens the window for lawsuits based on actions that took place a long time ago. A Diddy ex-girlfriend then came forward and sued him. Right, folks? Now, I'm not here to condone, you know, sexual abuse. Uh, I'm an attorney who has represented battered women and who has gotten restraining orders for battered women and who has won the trial that followed the issuance of the restraining order. I'm extremely sympathetic to battered women. But I do wonder whether we're being a bit overbroad in deciding that a Harvey Weinstein's a bad guy, and he is in some situations. But we're deciding that he's a bad guy in every situation involving aspiring actresses when you understand what people are willing to do to get themselves in the movies. Right? Those are my thoughts. The Diddy situation also, people need to realize, Diddy's just one guy in a situation where a lot of dominoes are going to fall. Right? A lot of people are involved. One of the reasons why I think Diddy is going to have to cop a plea if not be convicted after trial, right, is the fact that so many people are involved. Hosting orgies is one thing. Arranging to have drugs at the orgies is another. You know, everyone seems to be afraid of black men with guns, right? Apparently Diddy was a gun collector. Uh, as you can imagine, people suing Diddy um, civilly uh, hoping to get some of his money, uh, are pointing out that Diddy, of course, uh, had a security detail and kept a lot of guns on the property. And you and I know that's not going to play well on Court TV, where everyone watching Court TV pretends they don't have a gun. Right? Um, you know, everyone watching Court TV pretends that they couldn't imagine being at an orgy. Right? So um, let's just say... Diddy made mistakes. I believe Diddy gets convicted. I believe that Diddy is going to spend a long time in prison. I hope society is going to be real and is going to provide him with protection because Diddy is just a small fish in a much bigger pond. We all understand that before Diddy got involved in the music industry, a lot was going on in the music industry. I used to represent a community leader uh, here in Northern California. I'm not going to give any names, right? Um, and he and I were talking, and we were talking about his past, and he knew some players in the music industry, and he himself used to be involved in the music industry. So he was telling me about a very famous R&B singer, right? Let's say very famous, Hall of Fame level. And he was talking about how the guy had a major cocaine problem, right? Now, as I was hearing the story, I wasn't shocked, right? Cocaine problem, okay. Lord knows we've had a lot of people with cocaine problems. Well, he was talking about how to get the guy to perform, right? To do certain gigs. Um, his friends started getting exploitative, and just started paying the guy in cocaine, right? The idea was that it couldn't be taxed. The idea was that you had to give the guy something where the guy was going to commit to the show on the spot, right? Now, folks, you know, let's just say hearing that major celebrities in the 70s, right? Some of the people now we know had drug problems were using coke didn't shock us then. Why is drug use in the music industry shocking us now? 
right? If if you know anything about the Manson family, that story, right, from the 60s, you know that one of the Beach Boys had many of the Manson family women practically living at his place, right? They hardly knew him. He hardly knew them, right? We know about the story because a lot of people got VD from the Manson family people, strangers hanging out at this guy's place. Right, folks, that scene has been around forever. Now, in the Diddy story, of course, it's the 2020s. Of course, cameras are involved. And, of course, there are allegations of blackmail. Right? I'm not saying mistakes weren't made. I'm sure the same thing happened with Jeffrey Epstein. Right? But just understand, we need to sort through the blackmail from the orgies and the drugs right we know the orgies and the drugs have been taking place for decades that predate an epstein and a diddy those are my thoughts let me hear yours right and i don't mean to condone in any way shape or form any kind of sex per play type situation right i'm not you know there shouldn't be a quid pro quo but let's just say, if you're going to shut down every raging party that many people are dying to get into, then you're going to have to go all throughout Southern California, aren't you, when you're dealing with the entertainment industry? Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.